Okay, so this time I went a little bit overboard and I built this crazy thing. And I gave you a little bit of a sneak peek of it in my last video, but I don't know if uh, anyone really knew what this thing was about because, I, you know, it was barely finished. And what this is, is a mechanical calculator that basically does addition, subtraction and multiplication without using any adders, multipliers or subtractors. Is that what they're called? Subtractors? I think that's what they're called, but basically everything is done mechanically. That means whenever you press a number, that exact same number of items is passed through the system and then whatever operation you do to it, whether you want to multiply it or add it to something else, the number of items is passing through the system and getting manually counted by a mechanical arm somewhere back there, which I'll show you in a minute, and then the result would show on here. So this thing on the screen is the result of multiplying 9 by 9. But let's go ahead and click the clear button, which uh, you see this thing rotating to indicate that there's some moving parts in the back. And uh, now that we're back to zero, I'm going to show you how this thing works and tell you a little bit about it. But before I do that, I want to ask you to quickly consider clicking the subscribe button if you're not subscribed, because I release a lot of create mod videos with a lot of cool contraptions. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy the rest of my videos. And if you're new here, you might want to consider clicking my channel and looking at some of the videos because I have a lot of practical creations as well that you can use in your base and in your survival world and not just crazy things like this one. But that being said, let me show you how this crazy thing works. So like any other calculator, you want to start by pressing a number. I'm going to press number 5 and uh, like any super primitive calculator, <laughs> this one doesn't show you the number when you press it. But what it does is it actually releases that amount of items in the system. So when I pressed 5, we have this set of log chests right here and I did this thing really to make the build a little easier. Instead of using one chest where I control how many items leave and move these around, I created a number of chests because it's creative mode and items are free. So we just released 5 items from this chest and they go and sit in this chest right here. As you see, there's five items here. And then the chest is locked and there are multiple things that could happen. You know, this depends on if we're subtracting, multiplying, or, um, well, there's nothing else. But anyway, or, or if we're clearing the system and we just want to quit halfway. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and press the, pre uh, the plus button. And you see this thing spun a little bit because what happened is that this entire row of redstone links was pushed about four blocks up, I think. Yeah, it was pushed from here to here so that we can send the operation details. So when we first start the system, the redstone links that are connected to the buttons on the front send a signal to this row right here. So you see we clicked five and now the toggle for five is on so that this thing is always on and it tells the system that we have a five going on. And this is mostly important for multiplication because we want to remember the number we pressed and I'll show you why in a second. So now that we've hit 5 plus, let's say we hit 6 now. And uh, because addition is such a simple operation, all that happens is that a 6 gets released from that second set. So now we have 11 right here. And all we have to do is count them. So let me show you how the counting process happens. The counting process happens when I hit the equal button the items will start to float through this system and get picked up by this mechanical arm, which places them here. I started to pick up some of the items, I think, so the total might be wrong on the other side. Um, whenever an item passes through here, this thing sends a signal to the analog counter up there, which I will show you how it works in just a few seconds. But right here, yeah, we have a 9, so um, I should have 2 on... Well, I have 44, so <laughs> I completely ruined the count, but I promise you it does things correctly. So let me clear this botched operation because I went and stood too close to the counter and picked up two of the items. Uh, but when I hit clear, everything goes back to zero. And uh, that bar down there is also brought, bound, uh, brought back to the base. So let's try multiplication now so you see how awesome it is. We're going to hit nine. And so when I pressed nine, like I told you earlier, we sent a nine through this first row powering this latch. And then this thing right here is doing something very interesting. If we go all the way down to the bottom of the system, we'll find this set of pistons with only this one retracting. 
retracted, allowing this thing to go uh, through. And what this is, is literally number 9, because we selected it. Whether we're multiplying or not, the system doesn't know, it just prepares the system for multiplication. Because right here, and as you see, there is one source of power, or, you know, multiple sources, but they're all connected to this grid of redstone, meaning whatever happens there is going to affect all of these, but in reality, it's only going to affect the 9. And this is because whenever I hit multiply, and I don't know if I hit multiply yet, um, I hope I have, because otherwise, uh, yeah. So this is multiplication, and we're sitting at the very top, and what's going to happen now is if I hit 6, and I want to show you before I hit it, what happens is that we are going to send a signal, and I don't know why I covered this up like this, but here are these redstone signals corresponding to each one of the numbers ending by 2, because obviously you don't want anything happening with 1. And um, let's say we are going to press 6, right? So if this was 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, what happens is that this receives a signal and sends a pulse through that repeater and then this takes another second passes the pulse to this block which then goes through this repeater and another second and another second and uh, as you see we have you know if you have the number if you press nine you're gonna send eight pulses because we also deposit nine in the first press i hope this makes the remotest amount of sense because I feel like I'm confusing you um, yeah I feel like I'm being very confusing but anyway so now if I press 5 so I press the number 9 9 items were deposited into the chest and now if I press the number 5 what's gonna happen is we're going to send 5 pulses uh, we're actually gonna send 4 pulses because each one is one less is gonna send 4 pulses through this system into this block which goes back into the chest with nine items at the very top so we're going to release four sets of nine and we have one nine in the chest which would make the five by nine so let's say i press six because that's what we intended to press in the first time um the pulses are probably already being sent there they are we just saw the sixth one and so if i go up here i should find 45 items which is nine times five but since we hit six, we should go and find nine in this chest right here. There it is. So that's the perfect number. Uh, and now when we hit equal, we're going to see the calculation process working seamlessly. And I'm going to try not to go too close to the mechanical arm this time so that I don't disrupt the operation. But as you see, for each item that goes in there, a pulse gets sent to this redstone link. And what this does while the counting is happening is it turns off let's find the exact redstone link it's right here so it sends a pulse into to this torch which turns off this clutch which allows this gantry carriage to move one block now it moves one block at a time with each pulse and then when it hits this last block a signal is sent to the beginning that turns everything off and brings it all the way back to the beginning because this resembles us hitting a 10 in a count and going back to zero and then moving up the second row and so this keeps the count going very smoothly and uh, I came up with it way back when I built this system over there which essentially was counting the same way but as you see it was a lot bulkier and a lot crazier and it only did addition so uh, it wasn't really a full-blown calculator but it was definitely the inspiration behind this and for some reason I think um, Whenever I clear the system, this trapdoor opens because this is the clear redstone link. So I'm just realizing why I had to keep closing this every five minutes. Um, and the count says 54. And that is correct. Yeah, it took me a second to think. Oh, uh, wow. That was bad. So yeah, <laughs> anyway, I freaked out for a second. I thought the 54 was wrong and I had to... Well, you imagine, I have to go find out why it's wrong when I don't think anything is wrong. So, that's all that's happening here. Um, subtraction is a little more fun. I actually had to do the subtraction, which I've never... <laughs> I don't think I've had to do that before. So if we hit 9, uh, again, you'll get 9 items in this chest. Um, and then when I hit subtract, we're going to move to the second row with the command section so that we are uh, putting the commands in there, in that row. That's multiplication over there and this is addition. 
And now, uh, what did we pick first? We picked nine. So if I pick seven now, uh, what's gonna happen is we should find nothing in here, right? Yes. And this is the subtraction box right here. And we should find two items in it. Right here. Two items. And then the difference should be here. There's seven items. Now, um, there's no way to clear this. Uh, I forgot to set something up, but it's not really a big deal. You'll never end up with a lot subtracting nine from our, you know, anything from nine, uh, from one to nine. So if I hit equal now, it's just going to count those two items and display them on the screen. So usually these kinds of things that are the least practical and uh, that I don't know how interested in them you are. They are the most exciting for me to build because they're crazy and they just allow me to relax and spend hours upon hours just building this kind of thing. But I promise that I'll try to stick to more practical things as I go or at least things that you can use to an extent. Um, but regardless of that, I'm still including the schematic to this thing in the description. Just in case you want to use it, you might want to figure something out for this trapdoor here. But if you end up using this in your survival world, and I think you can because all it's using is one single creative motor here and it doesn't take a whole lot of stress units because nothing depends on speed. You can run it slowly on a fan probably. And uh, the rest of it doesn't rotate, so... Honestly, you could technically have it in your survival world, but if you end up doing that, I would really like to hear about that because, um, you know, there are millions well, not millions, but tons of redstone links here, and you will probably have issues with these in your world from then on, if you decide to use this thing. Um, I would love to hear what you think about this calculator thing right here. It's the first mechanical calculator I've ever built, and it may be the last, because honestly, it does everything I want it to do, and... I probably won't be using it much other than coming by and uh, clicking some things every now and then. Uh, and maybe if one day I can walk into this world in VR, I'll go try this one again. But it really has no applicable use in the world. Um, one other thing you can do is that you can rotate this thing manually to set the machine in subtraction and rotation. So technically you don't need any motor to do anything. But that would also mean that you would be rotating everything to move the conve conveyor belts and all of that. So it's not highly recommended. But at this stage, I think that I've told you everything about this thing. Even though it's my most complex build yet, I don't believe that... I don't even know what all of these things do by now because I didn't really use really proper labeling. Like, I can track what a button does and walk through it and find an issue in the system. But if you ask me what any of these does, I would probably have uh, to spend like 20 minutes walking around trying to figure it out. And, and this is probably what you would describe as a as a poorly documented project, but as is usually the case with most of my Minecraft builds, I don't do documentation as I do them. Um, so I really hope that you liked this and uh, that this video was enjoyable to you. And if it was, again, please consider subscribing. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.